Hey y'all, here is my layout that I made for this tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to emboss. Now I know I was highly confused at what the word emboss meant. You see it in a variety of places within Photoshop Elements and I'm going to be teaching you a new way to emboss that actually doesn't actually have that title within Photoshop Elements. But embossing simply means um, so that it looks looks uh, raised, almost as if you can reach onto this paper and <coughs> feel the texture, feel that this um, was maybe uh, stamped. Let's go. I want you to look more right in, like to this word "wanted," uh, because that's done a little bit better than this. The flowers here, um, the text in this background. It looks almost as if you took a stamp and pushed down on the back side of the paper, which caused it to raise up on the front side of the paper. That's what embossing is. Um, you may think of it most commonly maybe in um, some textures on wallpaper. Uh, you can look at some wallpaper and it almost looks like it's been stamped and kind of pushed up and through uh, from the back side so that the front side stands out. Um, most of the time uh, the embossing tends to look a little bit darker and I'll show you some examples um, as we're playing with this. So um, this background paper I embossed it with the text <coughs> and I also embossed it with these little roses because I had roses here on my element in my photo and you can see I also embossed the background of this photo and so we're going to learn how to do that um, I want to show you what a big difference this makes. Here is the original paper without any embossing and how the layout looks with it that way. And then this is with the layout embossed. It really gives it a lot of texture and depth. <clears throat> and so um, first let's look at the places uh, within Photoshop Elements, a couple of them, that um, you will see the word emboss and in fact right up here on my title I have used one of them <clears throat> and it is the embossed layer style for bevels and if you go down to your bevels and hover over it you're gonna see this one says simple emboss and that's what I applied to my <clears throat> text there. This one says simple pillow emboss. So let's take a moment to play with those. Um, I'm going to go to my text here and click on the simple emboss and let me fix my headset here. It's wanting to fall back. Um, let's double click on that one and this is what the default of it is and you can see it tries to make it look like it's raised up off the page but it's not truly what I think of as embossing as much as you see these words in the background where it looks like that paper's actually pushed up. Um, so that's not really the technique of embossing that I was looking for. Um, we could uh, clear the layer style then apply this simple pillow emboss and you're going to see that kind of tries to make it go down into the paper instead of up. I don't like the way it looks at all. <laughs> um, let's hit the undo button. Um, this one actually has a simple emboss on it uh, but um, I went into the layer styles and I took that bevel down all the way to two and that's how I got that. And I'm not crazy about the look, but I put it on my layout so I can show you what the simple emboss does. Now, <clears throat> the other emboss that you're going to see, and there's probably more around here than just this, is under Stylize, Filter, Stylize, and Emboss. And if we pull this up, it wants me to simplify the text. I could have done that ahead of time, but I'm going to say okay. And 
you're going to see what it kind of does to uh, my text out here. Um, I'm not quite sure why I played with this. It always seems to have um, ugly colors to it, <laughs> no matter what color I play with. And um, I think that this filter is meant to be used um, in conjunction with blending modes and other things. Let me um, cancel this and I'll show you. Let's go ahead and control J to put uh, this on a new layer. Right click and simplify. So now I have my text twice. I want it and I want it up here. Now let's go to filter, stylize, and emboss. And you know we can change these settings on here. Um, however we want them. Let's see what it looks like when we go way up. It looks really distorted out there. Uh, just um, crazy. Let's just leave it about like that and click OK. So now I have this one above this one. That one there looks all icky, but if I apply maybe an overlay to it, you can see how it makes... Let's take the uh, layer style off the original. And so here it is flat with nothing, and here it is with the stylized over it. And so that might make an okay um, text. It would it certainly, it makes it look um, almost rubbery. Uh, maybe a little bit better than this over here where I used it in the styles. But if you zoom in and compare that to this in the background, which is what we're going to be doing, you can see what a huge uh, difference this makes. So here's what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to make, for the purposes of playing, we like to play, a new layer. And I thought I was going to put it at the top, but I didn't. So let's put it at the top. And I'm going to fill it with... Um, some purple. Okay. Um, now I'm going to uh, take some text. I have some down here I think I saved. So you create some text. Here's some text. And let's say um, it is recommended that you create this around uh, your layout. So let's um, go ahead and bring up a photo just for the heck of it and the journaling. Okay, turn the photo on. So I've got my photo there and I want my title right above it. Okay, so you want to position it exactly as you want it to be spaced around your uh, layout in your image. You don't always have to do this, but if you want it to go into a specific spot, it, this is what you're going to need to do. And so I'm going to turn off all of the layers And I'm going to do a file, save as, and put it on my desktop. And before I just name these um, H for Hummy 2 and H text, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what we name it. Um, let's just name this one test. Now you're going to want to be this to be a Photoshop.psd format and click save. Now here's what's going to happen. You'll notice now my file name Grandma Creation is um, now called Test PSD. Um, and so I like to close these out just for safekeeping and let's open them back up. Let's open up the Test PSD to make sure I'm in that one. And I'm going to get rid of all of those extra layers. Every single one of them. We don't really need all of those in our 
texture file. I just gave you a clue. This is going to be our texture file. And I'm going to click yes to save it. Okay, I don't need to leave it open. Now I'm going to go back and get uh, my layout file that we were working in. It's got a lot of layers. It takes a little bit to open. Okay, so I had, um, well, I forgot to save it before I uh, closed all that out, but that's okay. I'll show you how this works. We'll just go back up here, create a new layer, and put that purple in it again. Um, what did we have up there? A photo and a text layer and we had this title layer up there and let's turn those three on okay nope we didn't have that title layer up there we had this title layer up there get rid of that and we didn't have that photo layer up there well yeah, i'm not doing very good we had this photo layer up there Okay, this is what we had going on. Um, and I actually had put this directly over this. You'll remember I moved it. Okay, now we're going to turn this off and just so that we can see what's happening. And I'm going to go to my background layer. Now in this case, I'm just using a solid color because it makes it really easy for you to see what is um, going to be happening. Let's go to the filter drop, whoops, gotta select that layer. Filter drop down menu, texture and texturizer. Now when you open this up, it's taking a while because I don't have enough RAM. Um, to run <laughs> the two programs together at the same time. Okay, this is the H2 texture I had created that's coming up as a default because that's what I utilized the uh, last time. Let's go ahead and make this um, let's see, I gotta make this small enough so you can see everything here on your screen. There we go. Um, right next to where it says texture, you're going to see the flyout arrow. You click on it and it says load texture. And then I'm going to go find that texture we just made, the one that's called test in this case. And I'm going to open it and you're going to immediately see that it shows up up here at the top. Let's zoom in a little bit so that you can see what we're doing. Okay, so you can immediately see it shows up up here in the exact same spot as we created it on our layout. And then you have your choices of scaling. Now, if you scale it, let's see, let's back it way out it's going if you scale it up or down you're gonna see it moves it so now it is I wanna see fit to screen no 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 because <laughs> then you guys can't see what I'm doing <laughs> that's not what I wanted okay we wanna see this at like 12% um, there we go maybe a little bit bigger 25%. Nope, let's go back to 12%. I'm just trying to get this where I can show you so you can learn. Um, you're going to see when we scaled it up to 125 how this is no longer centered and the word wanted is almost going off the page. If we move it over a little bit more, um, you're going to see wanted is disappearing off the page. If you scale it down, you're going to see it's repeated on the page. 
Um, I don't know if you can see it that small, but there's one here and here and here. So what you need to do if you want it to go in the exact same spot where you originally created it on your layout, this has to be at 100%. And now you can see it's right here in the center of the layout in the same spot where I created it in um, my layout. So let's zoom in and get a closer look at what we're doing. Relief now, this is just up to your uh, subjective whatever it is that you're wanting. I've got mine at a relief of four because I didn't want mine to be feel like it was punched up too far off the paper. And you have to remember when you bring the relief up, you, you're you going to be creating, see these white highlight areas, and that's going to be bringing focal weight, you'll have to go back to course one, to these. So if you want this to be more noticeable, more readable, um, have more of a focal weight, you're going to want to bring that relief up. But if you're putting it on a background paper just to kind of enhance the layout as I did, you're going to want that relief to be down a lot more. But let's turn it up. <coughs> there you can see what it looks like when it's turned all the way up. We're going to turn it down. And actually this 9 doesn't look too bad. And we're, I'm going to leave it at that. You're going to want your light to be from the top left because that is the standard um, lighting for the drop shadows that most of us are using. And you have one other option here. It's called invert. And so just like you saw in the bevel layer styles where it tried to make it look like it was punched down in to the paper, you can do that here too, just by clicking that. And that is um, really cool how that works. Um, but I'm going to leave it in its original and click OK. And there it is, right where it's supposed to go right over my photo where I originally created it. Now for me this has got a little bit too much white in it. I was at 9 and um, before that I was at 4 so I'm gonna go back because I don't like it. Filter, texture, texturizer and actually I'm gonna take that down to 4 and click OK. And there, I like that a little bit better for my purposes, for what I like. It's all completely subjective. Now, as you recall, when you see sometimes embossing, it almost looks like um, felt or uh, not felt. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, silk? Velvet? Velvet. Maybe that's the word I'm looking for. Almost like um, the background is a solid color and this is more velvety and so this is darker. Well you see that it's the same color as the background uh, background paper and so it's really easy to make this darker. I'm going to turn on my original words again and I didn't put them right back where they need to go but we're going to do that just kind of move it back down and position it so it's right on top. Use your arrow keys if you need to. And I'm going to turn it off and, and of course these are skills that you all have learned um, from all the previous lessons so I'm not going through these real, in real detail. I'm going to hold down my control key, click on this thumbnail to get marching ants. And then I'm going to make sure my purple layer is the active layer. I'm going to go out and get my burn tool. I'm going to go ahead and make it using my bracket key <coughs> much larger so it covers it. Um, you're going to want to do this in a lower exposure. The higher exposure is going to make it way too dark. Uh, make it a lower exposure. I found when I was playing with this, um, this lower exposure worked good for these solid color backgrounds, but when I was using on my, my paper from my kit, 
that it needed a higher exposure or it needed to be swept over twice. But I'm just going to do this just once. Control D to deselect. Now you can see it has that little velvety feel to it where that is darker than the rest. So I'm taking a long time to describe this, but if you think about it, it's really easy to do. I just created my PSD file um, with my text on it. Open. Here's my one with the text that I created for my other layout. It says the one I wanted <coughs> and um, in this instance it didn't matter to me where it was exactly. I just created this uh, without any extra uh, layers without it being in the original. I created a new document and then created this and saved it. And so when we go in here, let's turn these off and go down to my original paper. Let's make a copy of it to play with. Filter, Texture, <coughs> Texturizer, Load. I'm going to find that one that says text that I created. You can see it immediately comes in. Click OK. And there it is. I mean, it's just that easy. Now, um, I don't remember where it is, so let's just go get it again. It's in my, it's in these layers somewhere. Uh, but let's go get it again. Let's open this text. So if you create this um, outside of your layout and you don't have it actually in the layers you can bring it back in close this out and let's take a moment to scroll in and really line these up again okay they all look pretty lined up So I'm going to turn this off, hold down the control key and click on it to get marching ants. Go back to my paper layer, get that burn tool, and since I'm doing my whole page, I'm going to make that really large and just sweep over it once, twice there, just kind of go over each of them one time, control D, and see if I like it. Whoops, I'm making my bracket really large. Um, you see if you like it. I, uh, I think because I'm using a textured paper it wasn't quite enough so I'm going to hold down my control key, click on that text again, the thumbnail in the layer, make my bracket key bigger again. Let's go over it one more time. And since we only have the text selected, only the text is getting larger. And there, I think that's about right. Now you can see it looks like raised text. For my other file, I utilized some shapes. And um, I just made a brush out of the shapes and then I, out of the shape and then I brushed um, these on here and made this file here. So let's um, go ahead and bring that in because we're going to play with it. I think it's already in my layout, but we're bringing it in again because we're playing. And I'm not going to save all these changes anyway. Okay, so what I did for mine um, was to put that same texture on this same layout. So filter Texture, Texturizer. And this time I'm going to find the one that says H2 because that's my flowers. And then you can see them coming in and they actually came in over my other text. Click OK. 
and there they are around the outside. Um, let's turn this on and line them up. I'm just doing this over and over so you can see how fast and easy it is. Making this uh, black overlay was the hardest part. And I'm going to go back and get that burn tool and burn these twice because I learned that that's what's best. And there you have it. I've now embossed the flowers into there. Um, you know, of course, they would look good just on a blank layer by themselves. One more trick that I need to show you. Got an image here. And I'm not going to take, oh, that's my one that's already embossed. Okay, got an image here. I'm going to get, and I know this isn't going to work well, but I'm going to get my <laughs> quick selection tool and try to select just this oh see it's selected out here just my little image so you need to of course do a lot better job at this than I'm doing now um, oh, it's going way out there okay I'm not gonna bother with making this <laughs> any better because I seem to be making it worse there, that we're going to leave it at that for now. So you make your selection and you do a much better job at it of your object in your layout. And then if you hit select inverse, now you have selected everything outside of the object in your layout. And so now when I go to apply the texture to it, it is going to apply it just to <coughs> the parts that are selected, which at this point are the parts around my object. So I go to Filter, Texture, Texturizer, and I want to get my text. And in this case, I don't want, you can see how it goes right up to where the selection was, right up to this, and then it doesn't go on to the image, so it almost looks like it's um, going behind it. Let's um, back this out so you can see it a little bit more, maybe go back in. Okay, so in this case, um, it didn't matter to me whether or not it was centered or repeated, so I actually took this all the way down to the scaling of 50%. So in this case, um, the scaling worked a lot better. So if you had a pattern, let's say, of a bunch of flowers or whatnot that you wanted to put embossed into the back of the photo, you could use the scaling and the relief. I want a little bit more relief this time. Click OK. Control D to deselect. Now you can see it didn't go right here because I had this selected because I did sloppy selections. Uh, but over here, the selection wasn't too bad. Came right up to the edge. Uh, went over it here. But you get the idea. Selection was much better over here. So you can see right here where it looks like it's going behind um, just on the background of my photo. So if you want to start thinking outside of the box, um, and um, make selections and apply these textures only to certain areas. Uh, that would be something that could make a really unique um, and interesting layout. And so I hope you enjoyed uh, what I got going on here. Let me just open up my image so you can see it since I've messed up so many of my layers. This is my layout in its final form where I did do the embossing on the background and of the photo and on the paper. 
and um, I really look forward to seeing what you can do with this fun technique. It is a lot of fun and it does bring a lot of character to those layouts. See you all around the forum.